Good morning to each one of you. Uh, good morning to each one of you, our dear, dear Heavenly Father's children. We greet you in the everlasting and adorable name of Jesus our Christ and our Lord, and we thank Him for these precious moments during Holy Week. And it is tremendously inundated with um, visuals relative to what is happening among us today as we reflect through our TV sets. And then as we also are able to scripturally look at some semblance of parallelisms that uh, our parent in scripture highlighted and um, celebrated in this time of uh, Holy Week. So the dynamics of life today with uh, penetrating uh, outlines of life then uh, are before us. The deaths that Jesus is preparing for, the deaths that uh, we see forecast in uh, video form over radio of about uh, a year ago with Brother George Floyd. The parallelisms are tremendous. The parallelisms are tremendous. The parallelisms are tremendous. I read today from the 26th chapter of Matthew verses uh, 6 through 13. Matthew 26 verses 6 through 13. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize? this woman for doing such a good thing to me. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume over me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Matthew 26, 6 through 13. This section, this pericope, this passion text of our Prince of Peace, our pioneer uh, for the outline of life and living. Unto thee, O Lord, in this morning's moment, we celebrate the power of reflection 
upon thee as well, O Lord, we celebrate the practice of life. Uh, upon us, O Lord, we bow in humble submission to this day, this Wednesday, this midweek point, this call to honor the passion of our Lord. Uh, sanctify us now as in these moments we reflect, we reason, and we seek thee as refuge in the midst of so many out of our own community, community we grew up in, community uh, part of our early lives were fashioned. We, we reflect upon those who've crossed the swelling tide and stuck their sword in the sands of time never to study war, the war of life, the war of living anymore. We celebrate them. And we, O oh Lord, in a sense, see pictures of our own finitude being cast before us. And we, in a sense, draw nigh unto you, knowing that you have drawn nigh unto us. Satisfy the substance of life and of living. Teach us how to number our days and how to apply our hearts unto wisdom that this trail that you blaze, that we reflect upon, and that we celebrate, will bring healing and great preparation to the affairs of our own day. Hear our prayer. Bless those who share upon this tremendous platform of interaction over these media refrains, capturing words, deeds, reflections, and setting in place a posture of reverence and worship that we practice in our own, under our own vine and under our own fig tree. Speak thou now life unto us, that in these moments we are able to hear you, to see you, and to get a picture that shall aid and assist us in walking in the demonstration of the life you've given each one of us, ordered by you, sanctioned by you, and driven by you. In the name of thy Son, Jesus, our Christ, our Lord, O oh Father, we pray. Amen and amen. I cannot get to verses 6 through 13 without first coming to this other indent, indenturing identification that our Lord personally uh, releases as part of uh, personal dealing with the passion that he is, is engulfed in even now. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, that's the previous chapters, he said to his disciples, a very poignant personal moment, as you know, Passover begins in two days for us uh, upon our calendar. This is Wednesday. Jesus is going to the cross on Friday with our own calendars in mind and the seven sayings that he shall speak from the cross, uh, part of the highlight of those days. And we reach back into the eons of Exodus chapter uh, 14 and get a, a visual of um, Passover, 
how uh, the children of Israel who had been in bondage to those uh, of Egypt um, were released from their years of servitude and in that whole episode of being set free uh, the arms of, of Moses were utilized as the uh, appendages of deliverance that God himself utilized, but God himself did the releasing, provided the the release from bondage and uh, allow the children of Israel to leave their place of bondage, camp at a point of their pilgrimage, and then see the middle of the Red Sea, some 10,000 feet deep become the passageway that uh, the children of Israel would arrive to the other side, on the other side of slavery, on the other side of serving the Egyptians, on the other side of God planning their release from those 400 years of their own sad saga. Uh, so in, as you know, Passover, Jesus says, begins in two days. What shall occur? Um, what, what, what? What is it that uh, the three major religions of our day are highlighting during this period of life uh, in the midst as well of a pandemic where more than 530,000 have answered the call of life beyond the now life beyond the circumstances of this corona and its virus uh, now find persons digging through the peril of the pandemic and seeking some semblance of life as known before and we See here where Jesus faces such a penetrating um, effect, the turning point, or the turner, uh, a definitive one. Passover begins in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So this crucifixion, he talks about uh, himself gives forecast as as he's um, a spiritual meteorologist that stands upon uh, a platform in our own television systems and we can see the penetrating effect of weather uh, preparing us for kind of rainfall or the kind of respite from rain and where the Son of God in a sense prepares his disciples of that day and of us and see in verse 3 of Matthew 26 at that time same time the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting how 
to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. They not, but not the not of this text, but not during the Passover celebration, they agreed for the people may riot. The people may riot as I have viewed like several of you uh, portions of the video of a year ago when George Floyd um, answered the call of life beyond death in the embrace of of those who would in a sense be highlighted as those who take his life while he's crying out to his mother and the desire out of his torment, I can't breathe. Such a picturesque view is graphically illustrated in the sense in the life of our Lord. And reading this text, I'm led to wonder. Oh. And the defense in the George Floyd case have tried to paint a picture uh, about the lifestyle of Brother Floyd. Well, I see in this text the lifestyle of Jesus is highlighted. Meanwhile, I'm in verse 6 now. Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy, a skin disease that prohibited him from being around, being around others in the neighborhood because of his skin disease, leprosy, skin disease, skin, skin disease, uh, a, a type of not like us phenomenon, another race, another nationality, uh, those of African descent see in themselves a George Floyd those of um, Asian descent see in real time another personage, another race, another nationality being honed in because of circumstances surrounding the coronavirus and if uh, supposedly Wuhan, China has anything to do with what has been um, impacted upon the entire world. But yet, a description in verse 10 of Revelation 3 highlights that there is a time of testing that will come upon the whole world. The whole world. And the protection that God says that he can provide shall be the rescue for him uh, of sustaining in the midst uh, of the pandemic the effects of nationalities, of peoples all across the length and breadth of this world comes under the sway of this two-day announcement of Jesus about Passover. What shall we be passing from and passing into? There, there is a transition that many of us under the sound of my voice in a sense are tiptoeing through and noticing some, some, some inflection, some reflections, some affections from what is part of our times. Uh, but while in a house, 
while at Bethany in the home of Simon, he was eating. Jesus was eating. Jesus was in Simon's house, y'all. Jesus is in your house. We've been assigned, in a sense, to our homes during this pandemic. Um, that there is an assignment. That, that, that comes to us upon the, the living, the yet living. Our homes have become such a penetrating place. Even with what Simon the leper had in his own house. All of us got something that we are dealing with in our houses today. But Jesus, as he was with Simon, <laughs> he's in our homes. He's with our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head, this, this, this anointing time, this preparation period that um, Jesus was exposed to, to excavate in a sense some semblance of Passover, of coming out of the refuge of slavery, bringing God's children out of bondage, out for deliverance from their own houses, from their houses of caretaking under Pharaoh's sway to living in their mobile homes uh, and getting a, a sense of liberty and freedom expensive perfume was placed upon Jesus, poured upon his head a form of anointing, of preparation. My God, my God, my God. The dynamics of this Wednesday experience relative to Holy Week is a justification of unholiness in a sense being managed by the miracle worker himself and the father of the miracle worker uh, celebrating a covering in the midst of such confusion, in the midst of captivity and seeking to become freed as God is providing the forum of liberation. Um, Jesus asked Moses, why are you crying to me? And in a sense, the people had cried to Moses. Moses took the cries as leader of those he was leading back to God and God said I, I've given you empowerment for crying circumstances he, 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 he tells Moses to, to stretch out his rod and all of us know something about that rod or that, 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 that was given directly to to Moses, we've prayed about it in our Sunday school classes. We've, we've mentioned it in our own experience with God himself. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So in the midst of such conflict and confusion, whether we see it on TV today or read about it in the hemispheres of history, in our Bible, the promise of comfort 
in the midst of such conflict, whether we view it, whether we are experiencing it, the Lord speaks to, uh, to Moses and says, lift up your rod <laughs> with one hand and with the other hand, stretch it out over the sea as we are buttressed with eons of time as to how a celebration of liberation is going to occur. It's going to occur. It's going to occur. It's going to occur. It's going to occur. Going to occur. Moses stretched out his hand and in the middle of the Red Sea, some 10,000 feet deep, there was an east wind that God had released that dried the bottom of that sea and allowed, allowed, allowed those children of Israel to pass from one side of life and living to the other. There is a passage, way, O oh Lord. There is a passageway, my brother, there is a passageway, my sister, that this Wednesday, this, this middle of the week, this, this circumstance now that is highlighted in the plot to kill Jesus. <sighs> While he was eating. While you eat today, while you say your grace, price difference came in. Money, money in position came in. The question of it, we could have sold how much this oil is worth, and she's wasted it. <laughs> and what some call expensive, other calls waste. Those dynamics are here highlighted as well. What's precious to you may not be precious to somebody else. Your life even may not seem expensive or seem important to some, but to others. You're part of their house. And your house may not carry definition like those who are of that house uh, are lifted up as part of that house. We could have sold it, could have sold what this oil wasted in the eyes of some, but directed by the eyes that really matter, the eyes of God over his son could have been given to the poor and Jesus is dying for the poor. Well, I criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me. You will always have poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare. <laughs> now this God's son to prepare my body for burial. And thank God these reflections and these direct implications of Jesus himself, the Son of God, the propitiator of our sins, the propitiation is taking place, is ordering, is ordering new life and steps into life as heaven views it through the pattern of the sun. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, whenever or wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this is part of it, y'all, this is part of that preachment. This woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. He anoints my head with oil <laughs> and my cup. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
that which is at the bottom that catches the residue of my redemption, says Jesus, will be remembered and discussed. We celebrate this third day, this Holy Week experience. I've just tried to stay within the environment of 30 minutes, Monday, Tuesday, and today. So we come now to this point where the insulation for our lives and living um, under the uh, strength of medicine of um, the vaccine for our virus that we're dealing with during this period of life and living. Jesus sat at table with his disciples and said, uh, uh, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And he lifted bread, which pointed to his own body. And as he broke it, he speaks of the power of becoming our propitiation, our way through. <laughs> our way through. Our other side, life other side of this, what we're dealing with now, every last one of us, what we are dealing with right now, there's the other side to it, the insulation through this, through this covering, this bread is the New Testament. An example of those who, under the guise of such a testament, are able to arrive at the other side of this pandemic, of what we're going through in life, only because of the bread of life himself that orchestrates these circumstances. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, such insulation. I, I've, I've had my two shots. <laughs> I've, I've had my two shots. And... Um, along with my wife, along with my son, along with both sons, along with my daughter-in-law, we've had our two shots. <laughs> but there is a vaccine that becomes the parent of all vaccines, even for coronavirus today. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners can plunge beneath that flow and lose all of their guilt and shame. The New Testament that's in his blood. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, wherein the, the bread becomes the insulation providing insulation for us. The fruit of the vine, his blood becomes inspiration. It's in the highway system of our physical frames, everywhere our veins and our arteries go, that blood is flowing from the crowns of our heads to the very sole of our feet. Bread, and blood. Now in these bodies that are going through some of the home life difficulties of this pandemic and we celebrate such life that the sustainer, the giver 
and the provider of such life has produced for us for these times. Now unto him that is able <laughs> to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding glory <laughs> in the midst of such gloom. Exceeding glory in the midst of such gloom. That's how we view it from up close and personal. And we celebrate the power that sustains us and has sustained us in every eon of life and of living. Blessings be upon you and your family today, my brother. My sister, and we pray the power that is in God's hands <laughs> will sustain you with what he's placed in your hands today. Hallelujah. Thine art, the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine is the glory. Revive us again.